In this video, we're going to see question 12 from the 2016 HSC Mathematics Tunit exam. So, part A. The diagram shows points A, 1, 0, B, 2, 4, and C, 6, 1. The point D lies on BC such that AD is perpendicular to BC. Part I. Show the equation of BC is 3x plus 4y minus 22 equals 0. Okay, so, B, C. Now, B has coordinates 2, 4, and C has coordinates 6, 1. So, I want to find the equation of BC. Now, I have two points on that line, and that's enough for me to work it out. Two points define a line. So, if I have two points, I'm going to use the two-point formula, which is the following. Y minus Y1 over X minus X1 equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, it doesn't matter what we choose to be our x1, y1, and our x2, y2, as long as we're consistent throughout the use in the formula. So, I'm going to call this x1 and this y1. I'm going to call this x2 and this y2. So, subbing our values in, I have y minus 4 over x minus 2 equals 1 minus 4 over 6 minus 2. So here I have negative 3 divided by 4, and on the left-hand side, I remain the same. Now, I want to cross-multiply to get rid of these fractions. So I have 4 times y minus 4 equals negative 3 times x minus 2. Expanding this out, I have 4y minus 16, and then I have negative 3x, and then negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6. And bringing everything over to the left-hand side gives me 3x plus 4y, and then subtracting 6 from both sides, I have minus 22 equals 0. And that is the equation that we needed to show. Great. Part 2. Find the length of AD. So here's AD. Now we're told that D lies on BC such that AD is perpendicular to BC. So in other words, this length AD is the perpendicular distance from a point A to a line BC. So, part 2. As we said, let's have a look again. AD was a perpendicular distance. So, if you can remember the formula for the perpendicular distance between a point and a line, that's great, but if you can't, well, it's alright because it's actually on the back of your exam. It's in the formula sheet. But anyway, this is the formula. The perpendicular distance is the absolute value of AX1 plus BY1 plus C divided by the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, now, what are our things that we need to substitute in here? So, we have a point A, which is 1, 0, and we have our equation of our line BC. So, the line BC has this equation, 3x plus 4y minus 22 equals 0. And what corresponds to what? Well, this is the point x1, y1, and this is the equation ax plus by plus c equals 0. So I go ahead and substitute my values in. I'm working out the length of AD, so the distance AD is the absolute value. What's A? A is 3 times x1, which is 1, plus B is 4 times y1, which is 0, plus c, which is negative 22, divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so I have 3. This term here is 0, because 4 times 0 is 0. So I have 3 minus 22, which is going to be negative 19. And I'm taking the absolute value of that. And I divide that by the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, 
Hopefully you can recognize that as a Pythagorean triad, and that gives us 5. Okay, so negative 19, once I take the absolute value, of course it's 19 divided by 5. And so that's the distance of the line AD. Alright, and the final part. Hence or otherwise, find the area of triangle ABC. Now let's have a look. Triangle ABC is this thing here. So, when they say hence or otherwise, that gives us a suggestion to look at what we've previously done because the hence means that we can use previous parts to work it out. So, if I found the length AD, this is the perpendicular height in this triangle. So therefore I can use that in my formula, which is of course a half the base times the perpendicular height. So, before we take that away, what else do we need? When we have the perpendicular height, we need the base length. So the base length, if this is our perpendicular height, would be the length of BC. Now we don't have that, but that shouldn't be too hard to work out because we have two points and we can just use our distance formula. So, we want to work out the distance of BC. Now let me just write on the side here what the points BC were. 2, 4 and 6, 1. Let's move this up. Okay, now the formula is x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared and then you take the square root of all that. Again, it doesn't matter which is which, but I always find it helpful to label so I don't get it confused. These are our points, and we just substitute in the values. So that's 2 minus 6 1 squared, plus 4 minus 1 squared. That's going to be negative 4 squared, which is positive 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9. So this is 16 plus 9 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So the distance of, whoops, B, C... Of BC is 5. Now, once again, I'm finding the area of this triangle. So it's going to be a half the base length, which is BC, times the height length, which is AD. So it's going to be the area is a half the base times the height, which is a half. Now, the base was BC, so it's times 5, and the height was AD, which we worked out in part double I. So that's going to be 19 on 5. These fives will cancel, and I'm left with 19 on 2 units squared. And that's part A. Part B. The diagram shows a semicircle with center O. It is given that AB equals OB. So AB equals OB. Also, angle COD is 87 degrees, and angle BAO is X degrees. Okay, so all that information has been drawn on the diagram for us. That's good. Part I, show that angle CBO, CBO, so this one in here, equals 2x degrees, giving reasons. And just note that it's only worth one mark, so there shouldn't be too much to do. Okay, now, what do I know? I know that this side length, AB, is equal to that side length, BO. So I know that triangle ABO is isosceles. And what do I know about isosceles triangles? I know that their base angles are equal. So that tells me that this angle in here should be equal to x degrees as well. Hopefully you can see the pencil in the video, x degrees. So now I need to put that on paper because I have to present an argument to the marker. So angle, or first rather, triangle ABO is isosceles. So, therefore, I can say that angle BAO equals angle, uh, let's see, BOA, probably should have the diagram in here as I do this, let's see if we can get it, yep, because triangle BOA, sorry, angle BOA, which is equal to x degrees, and my reason is that the base angles now, I'm going to write shorthand here, but in an exam, you shouldn't write in shorthand. But base angles of isosceles, isosceles triangles are 
equal. Okay, so I have that this angle here is x, and I have that this is a nice little triangle. Great. Now, this angle here, which is what I want to find, I want to show that CBO is 2x. So this angle here, how can I say that this is now 2x? Well, this is an exterior angle for this triangle. So, I can say that angle CBO is equal to x plus x. Why is that? Because the exterior angle of a triangle, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles. Angles. Okay? So this angle here is going to be equal to this one here plus this one here. So it's x plus x, which is 2x. And there we have that part done. Now the next part, find the value of x giving reasons. So let me write in here on my diagram that this is 2x. And I suggest that every time you prove or work out some sort of information whenever there's a diagram in a question, you should add that to your diagram because it's quite helpful. Okay, so I know that this angle here is 2x and well, they've marked it in as well. This side length is equal to this side length. And by the way, the reason for that is because they're both radii. So they should definitely have to be equal. So here I have another isosceles triangle. So for part two, I can say that triangle OBC, triangle OBC is isosceles. And so therefore, the base angles have to be equal. So that means that angle OBC should be equal to angle OCB, or you can't see, OCB, B, and that should be equal to 2x. So, let me add that in, 2x. Now I want to find the value of x. So, what can I do? Well, I can see here that this is the only number that I have in this di in this in the whole question. That's the only number that's given to us, 87 degrees. And I can also see that I have three angles which form a straight angle. So they should add up to 180 degrees. Angle AOB, sorry, AOD should be 180 degrees because it's a straight line, a straight angle. So I have the value of this one here, which is X. I have the value of this one here, which is 87. This is my only unknown angle value. So if I can find this out and then add it to the other two, I know that that should equal 180 degrees. So how can I work out this one here? Well, it's the only unknown angle size in a triangle. So I can use the angle sum of a triangle to work out angle BOC. So let me write that down. Angle BOC should be 180 minus the sum of the other two, which is 2x and 2x. So minus 2x plus 2x. And my reason for that is because that's the angle sum of a triangle. Angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay? So that means that this is 180 minus 2x plus 2x is 4x. So this angle in here is 180 minus 4x. So now I have these three angles adding up to give me a straight angle. So I have... Now, what are the... You probably can't see both at the same time. So this is angle AOB. Let's write that. Angle AOB. What else is there? There's angle BOC, which is the one in the middle. BOC. So, plus angle BOC. And the other angle was COD. Plus COD. That should equal 180 degrees. And the reason is because it's a straight angle. Straight angle. 
Okay, now what's AOB? AOB was X. BOC, I just worked out above, was 180 minus 4X. And COD was 87, I believe. Yes, 87. So that equals 180. Now I just have to solve for X. So, 180 can go from both sides. I have minus 3X plus 87 equals 0. So that means 87 equals 3x, and that means x equals, mm, what's that, 29 degrees. Okay, and that's the value of x. Part C. Square tiles of side length 20 centimeters are being used to tile a bathroom. The tiler needs to drill a hole in one of the tiles at a point P, which is 8 centimeters from one corner and 15 centimeters from an adjacent corner. So here's 8 centimeters and 15 centimeters. To locate the point P, the tiler needs to know the size of the angle theta, which is down here, shown in the diagram. Find the size of the angle theta to the nearest degree. Okay, so when I look at this question, I think I need to work out theta, so what's the most direct approach to do that? Well, outside of this triangle here, I don't really have much information going for me, so I'm going to have to use the fact that this is a triangle and use the fact that I have all these side lengths in order to help me find theta. And if I can work out this angle, which I've already marked here, then I'll just be able to do 90 minus that angle and I'll get theta. So now the question becomes, how can I work out this angle here. Well, as I've already said, we have all the side lengths here. So if I have all side lengths of a triangle, there's a formula which is going to help me work out any particular angle within that triangle that I want. And that, of course, is the cosine rule. So, part C. Firstly, let's write down what the cosine rule is. It's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So, this is the formula, or the, the version of the cosine rule when I want to work out a particular side, namely, in this case, the side a. Now, if I want to work out cos a, that's no problem. I just have to do a little bit of rearranging. And that's going to be cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2bc. Now, if this, if we're using these, this formula here, then this is the angle A, which I want to work out, capital A. So the, angle, the side that's opposite this angle is going to be lowercase a, and my other two sides, doesn't matter which is which, are B and C. All right, there's A, hopefully you can see in the video. Okay, so now I just have to go ahead and substitute these into my formula. So... I'm working out cos A, now B squared, that's 20 squared, plus C squared, 15 squared, minus A squared, which is 8 squared, divided by 2 times 20 times 15. And if you plug all that into a calculator, you will get 0 0.935. So that's cos A. So A by itself is going to be 20, 0.77 degrees, and of course that's just taking shift cos of this value here, the inverse cos of that value. Okay, so that was this angle here, angle A, but of course I want to work out what the angle theta is, so this is a square, square has angles of 90 degrees, so I just do 90 minus A will give me theta. So theta equals 90 minus A, which is 90 minus 20 0.77, which is 69.23 degrees, and that's your angle theta, and that's the end of part C. Not too difficult. All right, part D. Part I. Differentiate y equals x e to the power 3x. Okay, part D I. I'm differentiating x e to the 3x. Okay, so I'm going to use the product rule because I have a product of functions. So, this is u and this is v. And remember, the product rule says that the derivative 
of a product of functions, uv, equals uv dash plus v u dash. In other words, I'm, I differentiate the first one, leave the second one, and then differentiate the second one and leave the first one. Doesn't really... I mean, however you, you remember it is fine. So, just using this formula here since I've written it down, I leave x and I differentiate the second one. So it's 3e to the 3x, because when we differentiate an exponential, we put the exponential down and we multiply by the derivative of the exponent. And then for v u dash, that's going to be, well u dash is 1, because the derivative of x is 1, so it's 1 times e to the 3x. So I have x, or 3x e to the 3x, plus e to the 3x, and I can make this a little bit more tidy if I want. I can factor out e to the 3x, and I'll have 3x plus 1 e to the 3x. Okay? And that's the end of part i. And it was only worth one mark, so it shouldn't take too much thinking or too much working out. And then part 2. Hence, find the exact value of the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the power 3x times 3 plus 9x dx. Okay, so, if I wanted to, let's say I had just got given the question of integrating this, this function here. I probably wouldn't know how to do it because I have a product of functions. Now, if I want to differentiate a product of functions, that's fine. We know how to do that. But integrating a product of functions, we don't know how to do that. In fact, that's something you learn later on if you did the extension 2 course, or maybe if you don't do that, but take it in first year university. That would involve something called integration by parts. But we don't learn that. So I wouldn't know how to do this, except I haven't been given this question just by itself. I've been given it as the second part of a question where it says, hence, find the exact value. So when it says hence, that means I need to use the previous part. So let's write down very clearly what we worked out in the previous part. We worked out that the derivative of x e to the 3x was equal to 3x plus 1, all multiplied by e to the power of 3x. Now, what do I actually want to evaluate? I want to evaluate this integral. So let me write that down as well. That's the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the power of 3x, 3 plus 9x dx. Okay, so I've just copied from the question. Now, I can see a remarkable similarity between this thing here and this thing here. I have e to the power 3x, well that's good because that pops up in here. And then I have 3 plus 9x. Now I can see that that is almost 3x plus 1. It's only off by a factor of 3. So let me factor out 3 from this brackets here. So I have the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 times e to the 3x, 1 plus 3x, dx. Okay? Now this is now, besides this factor of 3, which of course I can take out the front, this is exactly the same, this function here that I'm integrating, is exactly the same as this thing here. Well that's good because I know what the, what this thing is equal to, it's equal to d, dx, of x e to the 3x. In other words, I know what the primitive function of this is. It's x e to the 3x. So I'm going to integrate and differentiate. And those will cancel each other out. So I'm left with 3 multiplied by the primitive function, which is written right in front of me, x e to the power 3x. And I have to evaluate that between 0 and 2. Substituting 2 in, I'll get 2 times e to the power 3 times 2, so e to the power 6. Substituting 0 in, I get 0 times e to the 1, e to the 0, which is 1, but it's 0 times something, so it's just 0. And so I'm left with the final answer, which is 3 times 2, 6 times e to the power 6. And there we have it. We've actually worked out this integral, which without the previous part, we probably wouldn't know how to do. And that's the end of question 12.